amigos, it's Miss Jen. Today I'm going to share another Skippy John Jones book with you. This one is called Skippy John Jones in Mummy Trouble. Skippy John Jones did his very best thinking outside the box. And this twisted his mama's whiskers tighter than a Texas tornado. Hey, you, Mr. McPoo, said mama, said mama Junebug Jones. What do you think you're doing? McPoo didn't say boo. He was too busy reading. Hey, little digger, I'm talking to you, said mama, scooping up her boy. A pyramid outside the litter box will never do. Then she saw his magazine. National Leographic, mused Mama. And the curse of the cat mummy? Why, this will give you nightmares, boy. With an upset tummy, too plus a puffy tail on the grandest scale. This story is taboo. But Skippy John Jones was in no mood to listen to his mama. So he skedaddled into his room. For a really good bounce on his big boy bed. He bounced once, he bounced twice, and the third time he bounced, he said, Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I do love my mummy. But if I don't bounce, I get knots in my tummy. Then the kitty boy flipped over to the mirror for a look-see. What do you think he's gonna see? Do you remember from the first book? Holy smokito, exclaimed, exclaimed Skippy John Jones. I know you, he said to the doggy in the mirror. Your ears are too big for your head. Your head is too big for your body. You are not a Siamese cat. Then, using his very best Spanish accent, he added, You are Still the big chihuahua, dude. The whole enchilada. And they might like chihuahua enchiladas in Egypt, thought Skippy. So the kitty boy donned his mask and cape and began to sing in a wee, wee soft voice. Do you remember how this goes? Skippito Friskito, and I'm off to see old El Gipito. My chicos insist, I dare not resist the chance to go meet a mamito. In the meantime, his little sisters, Jezebel, Jillyboo, and Jujubee, rolled into his room with a plan of their own. But the kitty boy was already deep inside his closet on his way to ancient Egypt. And paddling down the river Nile, who should sail right past but a kooky crocodile hunkered down on his lumpy bumpy back were his old amigos. The Chimmy Chongo's pack. A donde vas? called out Skipito. We are going to the Undermundo, answered the Chihuahuas. <gasps> Not the underwear, exclaimed Skipito. No, 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 said the Puchitos. You silly little beast. To the underworld, where mamintos rest in peace. Peace? exclaimed Skipito. Who 
wants to sleep in peas. We go, said the doggitos. We hear they are to die for. You mean they are better than the frijoles? asked Skipito. Si, sí, mucho mejor, señor, said Poquito Tito. Vamonos, said Skipito. What are we waiting for? But then Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones, spoke up. Hold your ponies, Pepito. To get to the Undermundo, we must first have an answer to the riddle of the Finks. But I'm not good at riddles, said Skipito. No problema, said Poquito Tito. You have a wee big brain. Then they set forth from the Rio Nile to find the Finks. The muchachos began to sing. Skippy, skippoo, skippito. We only have one chancerito to pass by the Finks. So don't be a jinx. Just answer the riddle, Dandito. The muchachos arrived at four o'clock sharp, but the Finks had been waiting forever. Don't let the gato get your tongue, dude, said Don Diego. <gasps> what? Cat? Where? asked Capito. That cat? There? said the peritos, pointing to the finks. But before he could say anything, the great finks spoke. Whose ears are too big for his head? And who loves to go bounce on his bed? Who creeps on all fours through his own closet door? Straight into the land of the dead. Skipito knew the answer to this riddle, but he was so nervous, he coughed up a little furball. You, you call that an answer, dude? said Don Diego. The answer, bellowed the Finks. So with his permission, the Peritos were free to pass on to the tomb of the King Rootin Tootin Kitten Kabootin. When they finally reached the pyramid, the doggies burst into song and dance. Are you ready? Oh, see, si, oh, say, oh, cerises. Our boy had a touch of the virus. He coughed up a ball. So the Finks made a call. And now it's inscribed on papyrus. But when Scapito saw how dark it looked in the pyramid, he began to feel queasy. My tummy hurts, he groaned, and my tail is getting puffy too. But his chicos would not comfort him. They just wanted their peas. Por favor, are you not El Scipito Frisquito, the great sword fighter? Asked Poquito Tito. See, si, declared Skipito, that is me. Then do your duty, dog, commanded Don Diego. So Skipito drew in a deep breath and dove into the darkness of the musty old tomb, chanting, Peas, por favor, peas, por favor, peas, por favor. He rocketed through the vault like a fur-covered comet until sunny, suddenly, smackito! Scapito hit a wall and knocked himself out cold. Soon after, three goddesses emerged from the shadows to prepare the kitty boy for his journey to the Undermundo. First, we salt and pepper him, said Ba the first goddess, and sprinkle him with lucky charms, said Da, the second one. Then we wrap him 
and roll him and bundle him tight, said Bing, the third goddess, and blow him a kiss and say nighty night. Then the trio rolled the wrapped cat down the ramp into the king's burial chamber. Across the room stood the four thousand year old sarcophagus of King Rutin, Tutin, Kitten, Kabutin. And just as they were about to deliver El Scapito Mamito, he rolled right into the feet of the oldy moldy mummy. Bada bing! moaned the king as he stretched out his paws. I need to rest in peace. Peace? screamed El Scapito, Mamito, waking up in a flash. And quicker than you can say mummies, mumps, and measles, he grabbed two pawfuls of peas and hightailed it home. When those chimichangos saw El Scapito Mamito come rolling out of the pyramid, they went into real into a real tailspin. Then all the doggies began to chant, Green chicharros hot, green chicharros cold. The best chicharros in the world are those that Scapito holds. But El Scapito Mamito was too scared to slow down. So he chucked the peas at his chicos and kept right on running. Straight into the arms of his mummy. What's the matter, Fuzzy Bug? asked Mama Junebug Jones. Skippy John Jones looked back over his shoulder to see if the three spirits were still chasing him. Bada bing, he wailed dropping the last of the peas. Then the three giggling goddesses raced into the room after Scipito with their puppets and a roll of toilet paper. We're going to wrap you and roll you and bundle you tight, they sang, and check you for cooties, then kiss you goodnight. That night, Skippy John Jones was bouncing on his big boy bed. No mummies in my closet. No mummies in my bed. No mummies in my bookcase. No mummies in my head. Just before he closed his eyes, the kitty boy checked his room one more time for mummies. The only one he saw was his own. I love you, mummy, said Skippy John Jones. I love you too, Bunny Boots, said Mama Junebug. Now go to sleep, por favor. <laughs> and that was Skippy John Jones in Mummy Trouble. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.